to make some Christmas tassels for journals or bags or whatever you might want to hang them from. I went looking for um, some examples of Christmas tassels last night and I couldn't find quite what I was looking for so I have spent the morning putting together some really fun tassels and I thought uh, since I've had a lot of questions about how I make tassels in general that I would walk you through how I put them together. It's rather disorderly. So um, the first thing I've done is uh, put out some paper to work on and to get messy. And I have put some washi here and measured out 18 inches to the first piece and 24 inches to the second. And that equates to, I was ready this time, 24 inches is 60 centimeters, 18 is about 46, and this is rounding. And in a little bit, uh, I'll show you what I do with the yard, and that comes out to approximately 91 centimeters. So I have some fabulous, uh, actually it was, I think she called it burgundy uh, colored, sorry silk, um, and I've ironed strips of it. Uh, I got it the other day. It came like this. Links for everything will be below the video. I, I just love this shop where I get the sari and I hope I hope it's showing you this deep uh, red. I was afraid that it would be a little bit pink or bright and it's not in the least. It's really quite uh, quite perfect for the retro Christmas color. So the first thing that I've done is I uh, cut well, I ironed several bits of sari, and I am going to, let me just zoom out a little bit. I'm going to cut two strips of this to about 18 inches. I'm actually going to go just a little beyond that because I want them to be about this uh, long, and I'm going to tie some knots in them because I'm going to put beads on them. So I'm going to go just just a bit longer here. And if you've bought sari silk before, you know that it, it is knotted um, about every yard or so. And so I'm mindful to not have, if I can, some of them, they're, the pieces are sewn or knotted together uh, more than a yard, but most that I get, it's a yard. So um, I try to put pieces in that don't have a knot if that's possible. So I'm going to cut two pieces for the tassel. I wouldn't worry too much about the edge right now. It's going to fray anyways, and you can always straighten it up um, at the end. So with these two strips, I'm, I have some large wooden beads. Uh, and... I find that if you roll the corner of the end of the sari, that you can usually feed it through. If you can't get that through, take your awl and be very careful because the silk, silk is delicate. You can gently poke it through just enough till you can grab it. So I am just going to tie a simple knot. at the bottom and I'm going to do the same on the other side of this and uh, the second one that I cut. And thanks to the magic of video editing, I've got the beads on both ends of these. They're not quite the same length now and they're not, the beads aren't quite in the same place and I'm fine with that. I want it to have a kind of rustic uh, retro look anyways, not a not a pristine factory made uh, everything's even kind of look. I'm going to 
take seam binding now. I have dyed this because I wanted it to look an older antique color. This is a cream colored seam binding uh, and I dyed it using Tim Holtz vintage photo. I'm going to take some scotch tape, just a little square, and I'm going to make the end of it look like uh, my shoelaces for my sneakers at the end and just make a really stiff little end to that to put it through one of these beads at the end. I find that it's hard to work with uh, seam binding just to poke it through the hole even if you're poking it through with with a tool but if you if you have the tape on the end of it it'll go right through there and usually I tie a, a double knot on this just to, um, it's a lot thinner than the sari silk. And this makes sure that the bead's not going to slide over and fall off on you. Especially if you clip your tassel somewhere other than on a book. I like to put them on my bags occasionally and wow, I just cannot tie a double knot to save my life today. There we go. And then I'm just going to take the end and cut that off and that's on there. I'm going to do the same at the other end. Maybe I can maybe I can show you how quicker because usually it's not as difficult as I make it look. Okay. And a bead. Isn't that funny? All right. And I'll snip that end. So what I have now are these pieces. I'm generally at the mark of my washi tape there. At this point you can add anything to it and, and you don't have to use the sari or the seam binding either. Um, any type of ribbons, fibers. Uh, I like to use these in my tassels. Um, these are Joann's. No, I'm sorry. The Recollections. These are from Michael's. Yeah, Michaels, and, uh, and and you can get these type of fibers and lacy kind of trims um, at many of the craft stores. So something like that for texture works well. I'm going to use some retro Christmas ribbon. Just zoom you out a little. Sorry for the bounce. And I'm going to just cut this a little over 18 inches. And you may choose to make much smaller uh, tassels, much shorter tassels than this. This, this is what I thought was called eyelash trim everywhere, but it's really hard to find it where they still call it eyelash. Uh, a lot of the stores and carriers now are calling it hot fur and it's the same eyelash trim that we've used in quite a few crafts and some of the uh, some of the brands are calling it uh, fun fur but I don't really think of this as fur because you know I got some of this for the well for another project and this is really faux fur 
I would call this fur trim. But anyways, if you can't find eyelash, eyelash trim and you're looking for it on the internet, try searching the uh, fun fur or the hot fur and you might be able to find what you're looking for. Right now, Hobby Lobby still carries the Yarn Bee uh, Gilt Eyelash, but the only thing they call eyelash are the ones that have the sparkly in it. Um, they have a different name by the same... I think they are calling it fur if you want it um, a solid color that doesn't have a, a sparkly, blingy element to it. So, anyways, this is a little bit over... Uh, 18 inches I'm going to trim this and I'm going to put in two strands because you can never never have enough sparkle at Christmas for the beads and to uh, close to to wrap and tie all of this I use for this project I'm using black hemp and uh, more and more lately I've been using this. This is 10 pound. You can get the 20 pound, but if you like using beads that are smaller, uh, you're never going to get it over the 20 pound. And and with the 10, you can use a needle and, and, and get your beads on. So I've just selected um, some metallic and some red beads. And you can see Bring you over here you can see on this I've just strung them along in patterns the way they might be strung on a tree so what I've done is I have cut a piece of this hemp cord and I've cut it probably a little longer than the 24 inches here because ultimately I want it to be the 18 inches along with the rest of my tassel but I'm going to tie a lot of knots in it and that's going to use up a lot of real estate in the middle. So what I did is I found a needle that I could both thread onto this and that would go through my beads. Nothing more frustrating than getting it all set up and finding out it's not going to work. See which way did this go here. So I'm just going to finish up the bottom of this string and then tie tie a little knot at the bottom where I want it to fall. Yeah, when I was a child, I could never play the piano and talk at the same time. And uh, it appears to be the same thing. I have a hard time filming my tutorials and talking and chewing gum at the same time consistently. So I have my beads ready to go. And again, it doesn't have to be even or perfect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start layering this and tie it. And the way I'm going to attach it together is I have one more piece of black hemp. And I'm going to put it through this big honkin ring. It's a jump ring so that I can open and close it to hook it on stuff. And I'm just going to tie a knot. And I'm going to tie the knot not in the middle, but I'm going to tie it, oh, what do we call that? About three quarters, three quarters of the way down. I want a tail on this end long enough to get it to tie a knot, but I want one end longer. And I want to make sure when I tie that it's not right at the place I'm going to open it on the jump ring. So what I do is take the longest sari silk in the middle and maybe one of these pieces of eyelash trim. And I'm going to keep it pinched in the middle here. And then I'm going to take the second piece of sari. And I try to put the sari towards the bottom because after I've ironed it a bit, it's quite wide. 
the beads aren't going to fall exactly the same. That's okay. sure that the beads are falling on each side of what you're calling the middle of the string there so I have this pinched and it's never going to fall like you're holding it it will drive you nuts if you try but you can get it pretty close and I want the beads and the prettiest stuff to be on top because they will tend to fall on the outside of the tassel and I'm just going to tie a knot. I've still got it pinched. I've never let go. I've just added that ring to the clump of uh, material and ribbons here that I've got pinched. And tie a knot. And I'm only going to pull it once and kind of gently hold it up here and see. I can't hold it straight up so that at this angle so that you can see, but I'm going to see that if it kind of falls the way I want it to. It doesn't have to be exact. And yeah, that'll work. So I'm going to flip it over where I just tied it and I'm going to tie that again in a knot because I'm happy with that. There we go. Now I can just pick it up by the ring and uh, play with it and see if I can get it the way I want. What I'm going to do is find the beads because I want them to show when, uh, when it's just hanging at rest. Okay, so the beads want to hang off this side. There we go. So I've got this longer and a shorter piece of the black hemp that I tied the top together with and attached this ring with. And I'm going to bring it right down here and start wrapping it around not too far from the top. I like to make it a little poofy. Uh, and really tight. I just wrap it around a few times. And then the other side of that little black is also sticking out. So we can wrap that the opposite way. And then tie it off in a knot. And trim the ends. So we have to put this on something that it will attach with to uh, to the book, to the bag. You can open this up and attach it to a lobster clip, lobster clasp. You can attach it to the ring on one of these Tim Holtz swivel clips, and then hook this on the top ring inside your uh, planner and it will drape right out and hold the tassel that way. I am using bulldog clips for Christmas journals. I guess I'll go with that. And I'm just gonna open it up and pop it on there. The other thing I like to do is uh, I like to put a charm on the outside and that's really easy to do. 
Actually, I'm going to go ahead while you're watching and put this on the clip. Because now I can get an idea of which way it's going to hang so I know where to put the charm on it so that it will show. That's going to be the outside. I'm gonna, I want my charm to be. I'm out of frame. I want my charm to be here where the beads are going to show and where it's going to fall on the outside of the journal when I clip it on. These are some of the new Tim Holtz ornaments for this season. Merry Christmas trees. So I'm just going to take a jump ring. Open it up like so. Gosh, that's not focusing. I'm going to put the ornament on it and that piece of hemp that I wound around the outside. I'm just going to clip this jump ring right through. It's hard to see where it is with all that tinsel glitter in there. That's hilarious. Okay, I think that's got that on there. There we go. Okay, and that's got it there. And they're ready to clip onto the uh, onto the journal. So what a messy tutorial that was. I don't ever think I've made a bigger mess even in my courses trying to show something. What fun. Um, you can do these any colors. You can do them any length. Uh, this was my uh, mini that I made for myself last last Christmas and as you can see I put a an eyelet through it and I hooked the round uh, jump ring right through it and it's another great idea jingle bells on the uh, on the tassel instead or with and as you can see on this one I've just used ribbons and string and lace and really no end of what you can what you can do with it so I hope this has been helpful and you've enjoyed it and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Baby, this year it's just gonna be you and me. Hang by the fire and chill. Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making a Christmas memory.